Merch Minds Podcast, episode 87. Special guest today, and Young is a little sick. Dude, is this twice in one year? Wasn't I telling you earlier this year, man, that like I haven't had a common cold in like over 10 years? Yeah, it's been and a twice, while. Twice in one year now, man. My throat's all jacked up. I, I, I don't know what's going on, man. I'm, I'm, co- I'm coughing up a storm. I don't know, man. Anything you can but, remember? Yeah. Like people being sick at the office or going outside and it was like randomly no, cold and then hot or oh, man, it's been it's been super nice here. I do remember Monday my, my, my throat was 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 definitely scratchy. Uh by yesterday I, I, I was I was I was just sick, man. And my boss probably thinks I'm dicking around because uh you know, I wasn't in the office last week because I was at VidCon and here I am calling in sick. <clears throat> so she's probably think I'm over here dicking around, but, <laughs> but the bottom line is I'm I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm in fact I shouldn't be doing the podcast right now, man. But I'm I'm sacrificing my health uh, for you guys. That's full dedicate. That's what I. That's why we have you and we pay you the big bucks to be on this podcast. Is because of things like this. Well, first of all, I haven't seen any big bucks from the damn <laughs> podcast. Uh, uh, but, but again, this is just the type of things that we do uh, uh, for the merch community. You know, we sacrifice our health and body <laughs> to put out a show for your benefit. Yes, very, very true. And uh, so since we've been sick, have you been working on merch at all or taking it a little easy or what? Hell yeah, I've been working on merch, man. I uploaded like 100 designs last night. <laughs> <laughs> true man i uploaded like a hundred um it was that week that i was traveling i didn't do anything but um um yeah last night i uploaded about a hundred designs um i'll be honest with you after this show um after this show i'm, I'm taking a damn nap so uh, uh i don't know if i'll get anything done tonight but uh um, i'll try to get some stuff done over the weekend okay i right, want to talk a little bit about uh merch news there is no merch news. Okay, you want to talk a little bit about uh, merch numbers? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk merch numbers. I'll start off. Uh, last seven days, 102 shirts sold. Uh, product purchases, $1,954.46. Estimated royalties, $437.98 in five returns. And... Uh, <laughs> So in my case, oh, you uh, laughing? What happened? Oh man, two things. Did you get suspended again? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, one hundred thirty-seven products sold. Thirteen returns. Oh. <laughs> so my royalties four hundred six dollars and thirty-three cents, and it was uh, it was better. Maybe about. Uh, three or four days. I mean, yesterday I still sold, like, I think I sold 21 shirts. Um, but these returns, I'm like, man. I mean, because the highest I saw it was at 10. Now we're at 13. I was hoping the 10 was just kind of like immediately after the Father's Day thing is going to go down. Instead, it's gone up. So now I'm at 13 returns. Well, what, 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 what kind of returns are you getting? Are these like for uh, uh, just evergreen designs? The reason I'm asking is this, because someone... I think it was last week. They responded a Father's Day T-shirt, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, in my head, my thinking was that's a little strange, okay? Because someone clearly bought that shirt for their father. Yeah. Do you then say no? I'm no longer going to give you the shirt. <laughs> I'm going to return it. Unless it just didn't fit, you know, know. the dad that wanted it. But um, yeah, some of them. Let me see. They are Father's Day. At least, yep. Here's another Father's Day. Here's another one. Um, for the most part, I can see they're still Father's Day wow. um, shirts that are the most ones that are being returned. So, um, yeah, maybe another, maybe the end of the month. I mean, we already are 29th, so maybe in the next two, three days, maybe it'll go down a little bit. Maybe the fathers will keep their shirts. Are you selling pop sockets? I, I know you have... uploaded designs, but are they selling? Um, only the ones that I sold last time. I haven't sold any since then. But then again, I was so riled up and pumped for the pop sockets and to get more designs in. Here's the second thing I was going to tell you, you know, get pop sockets into the designs, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Since the last podcast, remember how we talked about 
the merch news as far as like what type of keywords you're going to put in your descriptions. And you told me, you know what? I'm not going to risk putting the word shirt. I'm not in my bullet points. You know what I mean? You know how you told me that? Uh huh. And I was like, ah, eh, well, the shirt, the word shirt, I don't know. That's really, you know, 100%, blah, blah, blah. But I went back to older shirts like uh, beginning to somewhat mid 2017. And I noticed that there was a, a decent amount of shirts that had very, very small wording about fit, feel type of stuff for the shirts and i also had stuff that you wrote yeah and i also had um you know about like men's or women's or youth sizes and things like that now it didn't say anything specifically about that as far as like, you can't use it but i know that of course if your men's shirt is not in stock and you say that it's available in men's but it ends up not being in men's who knows it could be counted list. against you i don't know everything about the whole side of it so i was like i'm not gonna risk it i'm gonna go through them so it pretty much was broken down into the second half of all my newer shirts which was about 1400 of them were fine but the okay. other 1100 of them i have to go and manually change those and i'm about i think i have like 600 left to change damn <laughs> damn so mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's my update. Yeah. So I haven't been able to upload pop sockets even though I was riled up because I have to edit these first. This is like my main thing now, right? Um, to make sure I get that done because right. I don't want that link on me. Well, I've been uploading pop sockets and they're relatively slowly selling. Um, in fact, I just sold one right before we got on the show. Um, so they're 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 selling. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm glad. You know, hey. I'm glad we have them, and you know what? It's like I said last week. I'm selling more pop sockets than any long sleeves, hoodies, or sweatshirts that I've you know that that I, that I have in stock. Yeah. Um, so so apparently they're they're obviously selling. Um. So that's good, man. Um, I rem so I went in and I removed premium from all my titles. Okay. Okay. For all my premium T-shirts, I removed that. Now, from my understanding, in the title, you can still have T-shirt, pullover, hoodie, sweatshirt. Okay. Right. You just can't have the word premium. Yeah. Um, so I went in and removed premium from other titles. Um. Let's see what else. You know, someone asked me about merch collab, so I was approved. Okay. Okay. I was approved, but I have an email from them here. Let me see what the email says. Um. So basically, the email says they can't find my uh, seller central account. Um, <coughs> so, so they're so they're they're working on fixing that. Um, so even though I was approved, for some reason they're having a difficult time locating my seller central account. Um, okay. I don't I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So I'm just waiting on them to to fix whatever problem that they're having on their end. I emailed them, and she said, "Oh, it'll take a couple of days." Well, it's been more than a couple of days, so uh, yeah. uh, maybe I should just email them back, or maybe I should just log into my Solar Central account see if I see anything. Um, but because when I was talking to Eric, he said everything's done through the Solar Central account. Oh, okay. Um, which kind of uh, makes sense, and which we kind of talked about before how it might end up just going there in general <laughs> at yeah. some point, but I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it makes sense. You know what? I'm just going to have to talk to Eric cause I wouldn't even know where to go in the solo central account. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll talk to Eric, but, um, yeah, they were having some issues locating my solo central account. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Cause, so, cause someone was asking me, they're like, Hey, how's collab working out for you? And I was like, Oh, well, I don't know. Cause I got this email. They're having a difficult time locating my, my account or something. Um, yeah. So other than that, guys, we don't really have that much news. Um, I know it's Fourth of July weekend next week. Uh, you said you're you're uh, driving to Austin. Yeah, so I'll be I'll be in and out of town, just different. Okay, so so next week, so next week's episode 
we're gonna have to because we normally record on Fridays. Yeah. But because we're both gonna be out of town, uh, we're gonna record on Monday. But the episode will still be out the following Monday. Yeah. So, um, just you know, again, just things that we're doing uh, uh, to keep you guys happy as listeners. Um, yeah. So other than that, man, no significant um, merch news. Um, Are you done editing? I guess in all the premium and or other words you needed to. You're pretty much done. Yeah, man. I t- I, I told you, man. I t- I went in and removed premium uh, from all the titles. Okay. Very nice. Um, took me. I'm hoping I'll be done this weekend, but it's gonna take me a while. <laughs> it took me a couple hours, man. It took me a couple hours, but I'm I'm finally done. <clears throat> um, you know what? Let's just get into the show because I'm I'm about to lose my damn voice. Um, so we talked to Teresa Rose this week. Uh, Teresa is a Pinterest queen, ninja, uh, a warrior, whatever you want to call her. She's an expert when it comes to Pinterest. Um, we learned a lot in the interview, uh, and um, it was it was very it was very informational, very educational. Um, uh, I'm on board, man, because um, I I really believe that we need to leverage some other way to generate traffic to our listings, especially with AMS gone. So um, uh, let's talk to Teresa. We are talking to Teresa Rose. Finally. Another female guest on the show. Special guest. Special guest, Teresa. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Yeah. So, so where are you calling in from? Where am I located? I'm in Iowa. Oh, you're in Iowa. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Midwest uh, girl. Nice. You have to excuse my voice today. I'm sick again. For some reason, this is like twice in one year that I've gotten a cold, and uh, which is really unusual because I don't normally get sick. So yeah. just ex- excuse the uh, the voice. I kind of sound like Anthony right now without the cursing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're only laughing because it's true. Like we, we because I know, because I know. <laughs> yeah, we love Anthony. He's our brother, buddy. But but, but you're laughing because you know it's true. <laughs> so Teresa, she, she is the uh, the Pinterest queen. She knows everything about Pinterest, and this is something that I want to learn more about because, look, we pretty much know uh, that there's a lot of competition on Merch Amazon now. Uh, AMS is dead, so we need to somehow think outside the box on how to drive traffic to our uh, uh, listings. So, Teresa, welcome. Uh, first of all, uh, go ahead and just give us a brief introduction about uh, uh you know, on yourself and, and, and your course to uh, pin power traffic, please tell us. Okay. Well, I've been uh, doing e-commerce for quite a long time now for, for a while. Um, so my, my early days was selling on eBay and selling stuff that I already had, you know, and the reason for doing that was just so I could afford to live. Okay. okay? I needed to put brakes on the car. What am I going to do? Uh, ways of getting extra money. Um, started selling my books on Amazon, and then after a while, I ran out of things to sell. I mean, I can only sell off so much of my stuff, and then you don't have any more. So I thought about it. I thought, you know what? I think I could probably buy some stuff maybe and sell it and put that together. Then I learned FBA and went into FBA. I did do Etsy as well. Um, I was making stuff by hand, sitting at the kitchen table and sewing because oh, I had wow. some extra fabric, and it's. I thought, well, I've got – Let's use what we've got. I've got fabric. Let's sew it up, turn it into pillows or uh, some kind of decorative items and sell them. And I did. Sold every single one of them. So then I'm out of fabric. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just kept going and I realized I can do this and I can do this during my, you know, what time I have available to me. And started going further, got into Amazon FBA, started at the bottom, was just thrifting with whatever money I had, which was very little. I could finally, after several months, afford to start doing retail arbitrage because I couldn't even start to, I couldn't even afford that like most people can. Mm-hmm. And then I, from there, went into wholesale, uh, began figuring out how to contact manufacturers from home, how to start talking to them, 
And that made life a lot easier because I live in, in farmland country. So we don't, <laughs> we don't have all these retail stores like everyone else does. And so I had to do something um, as I tried to keep, keep growing. And from there, um, I had had a blog for years that I had been writing on. And there was a lot of traffic that was coming into that blog. And I couldn't figure out, you know, where it was coming from. Um, also have a Shopify store. And in my early days of my Shopify store, I was creating digital products and selling them. So I was selling ebooks um, pretty successfully out of there. Simple, simple PDFs uh, yeah. out of the Shopify store, connected to my blog, and the readers would go over there and buy stuff um, without a problem. So then I was trying to figure out, you know, where is this traffic coming from? Because it's not, it can't be all be Google with the Google algorithm changes that had happened. And I was looking in Google Analytics, and probably the majority of it was coming from Pinterest. There was, wow. one, there was one problem. I wasn't doing anything on Pinterest. So I had no idea <laughs> how that was possible. So I began to investigate. I went over to Pinterest. I just typed in my dom domain name, and up came a bunch of, of images that were off of my blog. So what was happening is the readers were going to the blog, to the website. It's a, it's a WordPress website. And they started pinning stuff from these articles because they wanted to read it later. They wanted to save it. They wanted some place to keep it where they could find it. And that just, that really woke me up. Because I wasn't actively doing anything on Pinterest to promote that website but there was all of these pins that were on there from everybody else. Everybody else was doing that. And I thought, okay, maybe I should pay attention to Pinterest to see what's going on. It's also going to maybe help solve that problem of how do we get the traffic into the Shopify stores. Um, a lot of people like, like the idea of a Shopify store, but what they don't understand is it's a lot of, it's a lot of work and energy put into driving the traffic in to the store. And for many people who have been selling on Amazon for years, they're used to um, they're used to being able to have all of these easy organic sales without mm -hmm. having to do social media, without having to drive traffic in. They're used to that. They kind of get spoiled, in my opinion. Like Amazon sellers are a little bit spoiled and they don't we even are. know it. I, I admit <laughs> that. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> so I, I, that, that's what I feel like is they don't understand how much work that Amazon puts into driving the traffic in. Um, but now we're at a point with Amazon where we're going to have to start doing some of that ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's become real clear with Merch by Amazon, especially uh, this last winter. Back it's in January, yeah. that was brutal. Yeah, that and, was very hard. And look, and, and, and you know, when I was in Vegas a few a few weeks ago, and, and and we had the opportunity to have a conversation with the people from Merch, they said it themselves. They said, "Look, the platform is is, is saturated. There's there's a lot more people selling on Merch now, so our designs are getting lost. So so we need to figure something. Some we need to figure something out. We need to drive traffic to our listings. And uh, uh, I remember watching." the show with you and Anthony, um, and I wanted to have you on our show because, number one, we're just a better show. Um, <laughs> and number two, I'm, 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 I just never really – I mean, I, I know of Pinterest. I have an account. I'll be honest with you. I've never used it. In fact, I just logged in and it says, do you want, it says, do you want to upgrade to a business account for free? Is that something that I should do? Is that yes. – I mean, okay. <laughs> yes. And, and, and explain Absolutely. why, please. Because you can get analytics. Okay. Those analytics are very, very important to help track what you're doing. Is I mean, why put a lot of effort and energy into it unless you can track it? So that's your only way of tracking the results of Pinterest is through those analytics. Um, another reason is because you need the ads. If you want to run some sponsored pins or some ad campaigns, those are only available through a business account with Pinterest. Okay. So why even give us the option? Why not just everyone have a, a business account? Because most people who use Pinterest, the average Pinterest user, just use it for fun. 
I use it that, as a that made me look dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like what you were doing. You weren't. You didn't join Pinterest probably for the purpose of uh, putting your business items on there. You were thinking, oh, I might do this for some research, some fun things that I want to find on my own. Cute outfits. Right. I mean, for, for me, it was social media. Like I said, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even realize I had an account, and, I, and then I went. I went on to Pinterest right before we uh, uh, we went on air, and I realized I do have an account. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, now it's um, again. I've never used Pinterest, but it's kind of like what Glenn said. Is Pinterest just pretty much just collecting articles and blogs and recipes photos, and <laughs> recipes, whatever, just anything on the internet, and then just saving that to my account? Yep. So what it is is it's called the Smart Feed. And the smart feed, it was introduced in um, 2014. Actually, that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. It was introduced in 2014. So Pinterest has only been around, uh, it started in 2010. So okay. it's what, eight years old? Eight it's, years old. It's very young for, yeah. for being a social media site. And when it began, it started out as being like social media. And then in 2014, they started to introduce in the smart feed, which is basically a search engine with an algorithm. So now your keywords is what's most important on Pinterest. Whatever the Pinterest user types into that search bar is exactly the pins that are going to pull up. So it's we're now able to target people um, with our pins according to their interests. So if you think of Pinterest, it's, it's, it is a social media site technically. However, it really doesn't act the same way as any social media site out there. It is more, it's more similar to Google hmm. as a Google search engine. So if you can imagine the Google search engine and now it's just all visual and that's all you see is just visual. That's, that's what we're talking about with Pinterest. It's a search and discovery site that is visual. And all you see are these pin images or pictures. And people love that. They respond so well to uh, the, the pictures, the, the images. And I think this is really the way that marketing is going for a lot of businesses is they really need to pay attention to this kind of visual marketing. It really gets people's emotions and it grabs, it grabs their attention more so than just words. No, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Cause, cause, cause I, I, no, I agree because every time, I do a search like on Google, the first thing that I do when I get the results is go to images. Cause mm -hmm. I want to out because I want to see what I what I what I search for. Um and, and it sounds like Pinterest um already does that for you. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> how many users are on Pinterest? Oh, that I don't know. Probably millions, I'm sure. Millions and and, yeah. and, and we're yeah. talking worldwide here, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it was started uh, one of the co founders has been Silverman. And an interesting story there is that Ben Silverman is actually from Iowa originally. Uh, he's mm -hmm. from West Des Moines, the Des Moines area, which is where I'm, I'm from, and I'm actually moving back there next month. Um, his parents were the optometrists for my mom. Oh, for years. wow. Had no idea. Had no idea of who their son was. It, that wasn't talked about publicly. Uh, so what happened was is that Ben Silverman, after he uh, graduated from college, he went in, to work for Google. Mm -hmm. So he worked for Google for a long time, and then he came up with this idea of Pinterest. So he quit Google in order to start Pinterest. And now it makes, it makes sense to me why Pinterest is the way that it is, because he understands the, the back end of Google, and he wanted to take some elements of social media and just fuse it together, but just do all visual. To me, I think it's, I mean, that's incredible. I that that it's it's this concept that is just genius mm -hmm. and i wish i would have came up with this this is a genius concept that he did so when he introduced in the smart feed what that means is the keywords is what picks up in the search engine the most and people don't go there to talk to their friends or to write stuff about politics or their negative things that are happening or drama they don't do that. They go there to relax, to get away from the negativity that's found on the other social media sites. But you and can have, 
but you can have friends or, or followers and stuff, can't, right, on Pinterest? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. And, and a lot of times it's people you don't know. They're just interested in what you're interested in mm -hmm. or what, you, what you're what you showing uh, to the public. So now there is a, a feed for your followers that's special that was just set up two months ago. But Pinterest released just two months ago in a huge interview that was done. And they publicly said that your followers makes up a very small percent, uh, percentage of the total number of people that sees your pins. They've been refining their algorithm to the point that it really depends on your keywords that you place in your pin description. Uh, there is keywords that need to be in your board with your board titles and your board descriptions all of that information and even your profile, the keywords from all of those areas picks up in the smart feed along with the keywords within your pin description. And when you have all of those keywords everywhere, that's what tells Pinterest who to, who to show your pin to. I got you. And so therefore it's really smart. It's a really, really smart. That's why no, it, it sounds like a really feed. powerful it's a, feature. It's a smart search engine. So now what we're able to do is highly get highly targeted people so if you're going to get people to follow you by doing it in this way and going through the, the keywords we're able to get followers that are highly targeted they have a genuine interest in what you have what you're offering and what you're showing okay so it's to me it's a much smarter way of working rather than trying to throw spaghetti up against the wall and see what will stick which I've done many times, and, and it never yeah. sticks for me. It never does. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn, did you have any questions? Um, so I guess I wanted to get into some of the T-shirt type of I, – I mean, it looks like – I'm pretty sure you get this question a lot. Like if I pin, let's say, a photo of my shirt and my design, either one, I can – like you said, maybe have like a buyable pin or someone's going to buy it. It takes you there. Or – they're going to save it and or looking for ideas or want to take my idea. Um, I guess, which one do you get the most as far as questions go? And do you recommend doing that with Pinterest, like pinning like all my shirts or something to try to get it out there? I would pin first, if you're going to, if you're going to pin from Merch by Amazon, I would pin only the products that have had at least one sale. Don't pin your stuff that hasn't had one sale because after now the rule is 180 days and then it falls off the cliff. Well, now you've got all of those pins to go track down and change the links on every single one of them. Mm, okay. And no one, I think it's just a total waste of time to do that. So only pin your stuff that has had at least one sale because then you know it's gonna stay in your account. Wait, you, you said after 180 days, your pin will drop off? No, your shirts, your products on Mercedes. Oh, oh, oh okay, 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 okay. I totally misunderstood you. So, I thought, I thought you meant the pin was going to drop off. No, the pin is going to be out there for years. Yeah, that's, forever, that's, right? That's, that's don't the talk, problem. Talk, talk, they, they don't. They never. They don't end. They have a life that, that spans years. But Merch by Amazon, their rule of 180 days, no sale, yep. then boom, it's gone. So if you are linking your pin to your Merch by Amazon products, make sure that they have had at least one sale. Totally makes sense. Because it can be a pain to go and track down all those pins later, mm -hmm. especially when you're putting out hundreds of and thousands of pins. Sure. So, so I mean, so if, so if I was to get started on Pinterest, it would make sense for me to just go in, and I, I know this is going to sound silly. Do I just go in and just start adding and following people? No. So that was okay. Uh -uh. That's a no. waste of time. That's okay, that did time. sound silly. Just no, 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 because, no, because, no, because she, was, no, because she very... said she said most of the people you're not going to know, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, do I just go in there and just start adding people and hopefully, hopefully, they'll they'll return? No. So so how yeah. do I get followers? It's it's a waste of time to do that. It's a way a complete waste of time. There's a lot of people who spend all their time just trying to follow people, mm -hmm. and then if they don't follow you, then they unfollow them. And they go and find other people. Do they do the same thing? They even hook up uh, these bots to do it for them. It's a complete waste of time. I heard about and the bots, yeah. And um, with the followers, remember that they are a very small percentage of the total amount of people that see your pins. 
And the reason why I was suspicious of that is because I was seeing not just in one of my Pinterest accounts, but in um, in all of my client accounts uh, that I'm doing management for, for their businesses. One in particular, I started uh, from scratch in November. So it was a clean slate. Started it completely from scratch, November of 2017. There is less than 100 followers, but the monthly average monthly viewers is 1.3 million. Wow. Now, tell me that that's coming from less than 100 followers. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. Mm -hmm. 1.3 uh, million monthly viewers, that is not coming from 100 people. Yeah. yeah. There's just no way. That, that just doesn't work pan out. So now it makes sense to me when they said, hey, don't focus on the followers. Focus on the keywords because you're telling Pinterest who to show it to and they show it far beyond your followers. Your followers do see it, but they distribute it out much, much farther, farther than just your followers. Oh, and we didn't realize this sense. for a while, but I began to kind of pick up on that, like, ha, huh, something's going on here. And once I started seeing that, I thought this is, a, I, 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 you know, I was doing the same thing too, making the whole mistake of, let me go follow a bunch of people. They'll follow me back and just go through this whole thing. What it turned out was, is the people that you're trying to follow in hopes that they'll follow you back are not high quality people. Okay. They're not even doing anything on Pinterest. All they're doing is just following those that follow them back. They're just playing the game. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I like I said, I, I don't know. I mean, this is my first time even talking about Pinterest, let, let alone using it. Um, so just, that's good to know. Like, like I would have, I would have just yeah. went on there and just started adding everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that's why in many ways it's not really a social media site where it's all about your followers. It really is not about your followers on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's about your keywords. So if you want to get serious about it, your keywords is where the gold mine is in Pinterest. And that's how I can take something and go from zero to 1.3 million average viewers per month in six months time. And that's you. what I was able to do with uh, one client account. And then I just start repeating that. And what I like to see is that we're doubling if possible. I try to think outside the box and get creative and how we can do this, but double at least the average monthly viewers uh, every single month. I think it's very important. Um, those keywords that are on your pin description are going to be on there forever for years as well. So it could really snowball and pick up speed down the road as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just a more effective way of using the platform. So if, the, if anybody wants to get really good at something on Pinterest, it would be mastering keywords. That's even more important than the images, the pins that you're creating. You can still have a terrible pin image, but as long as you've got awesome keywords, people are going to find it. They'll, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that will see it. They'll, they'll click through. They'll, they'll do something. Okay. Okay. Um, so it sounds like keyword first and then image second. Yes. That was, that's the order that I would pay attention to things. Okay. And that, that, put your time and me. effort on. Now, 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 is it fair to say that the demographic on Pinterest is primarily women? Mm, yes, it's still mostly women, but there is a huge percentage of men mm -hmm. okay. on there. And I've had um, some direct sales through Bible pins from men. Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, and I think it's because when they're there, they don't, they're not going to be window shopping. They're taking action. You know, they're ready to go. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And I've, I've found that if I send my pins over to the blog and then from there they go to the store, mm -hmm. it's even more effective because you have kind of, you've taken cold traffic and you warm them up a little bit, helping them get to know you. They found something, one of your articles, it's really great information. From they know there, you're a real person. Yeah, they're more likely then to go to your store or wherever else you're going to send them to, merch by Amazon, they're more likely now to buy, to purchase. So you've built that trust with them. I got you. And so sure. you have to remember that your your buyers are human beings mm -hmm. and you want to be able to relate to them somehow. Sure. Glenn, you want to ask you a question? I'm about to cough up a, 
a dog here. <laughs> uh, let's talk, I guess, a little bit about running ads. Like if I wanted to run ads on some of my shirts, would you recommend maybe actually have, like you talked about humans wearing the shirts? Let's say they're like, you know, if it's a shirt about, you know, a mom and and kids or something, maybe they're actually wearing it. It looks good. People can see that and it takes them to Amazon or maybe just, I see some of these ads too, or like some of the pins look super long too. Like they look extremely mm. noticeable than just the regular post. Yep. Um, what about, I guess, either one or your, your thought on either one of those? Yeah, long pins are gonna do best. So Pinterest came out and said uh, two months ago that 600 by 900 pixels or 735 by 1102 pixels is best. We've still been making 800 by, um, what was it? I, we've been doing 800 by, I think it's uh, 1500 is what we've still been making. Um, and it's still been okay. It's not getting cut off on the feed, but if you wanna be, no, 1200, sorry, it's 800 by 1200. If you wanna be more conservative, just do the 735 by 1102. Uh, an easy way to make those is in Canva. They even have a Pinterest template uh, base for you to start with. It's just, you can do it so fast and easy there. And just, we make about five pins per each product starting out. We don't want to do just one. We want to do five. We want to change the pin to be a slight variation on every single one of those so that we can track it and see which ones are the ones that people are responding most to. Mm -hmm. From there, we're going to we're going to look at those pins and say, was it the color? Was it was it the text that was changed on it? What was it about it that made it appealing? And then we're going to create more pins that are like that. So you're kind of doing a split testing as you go mm -hmm. to see which of your pins has a great response. Sometimes it could just be the keywords. So you do have to take uh, in your split testing and make one thing be the same and one thing be different. So that you could really analyze that and find out. Now with sponsored pins, it's still about keywords. It's still about keywords. When you were running an ad campaign, you want to run a traffic campaign. Those are best for products. And in that traffic campaign, you need to use the keywords and you need to add in the keywords yourself so that uh, Pinterest knows who exactly to show this pin to for your ad campaign. So that's extremely, extremely important that you do that. That's what's best for products. If it's for a blog post, that's different. You want to run that, that ad campaign just slightly differently, but most people are going to be running them to products. Mm -hmm. So it's the keywords that are very, very important there. Okay. And your sponsored pin campaigns. Also your keywords and your pin description uh, needs to pair with that because Pinterest puts all of that together. They take your, your keywords from off of your profile, your board, inside the pin itself and the keywords that you put in the sponsored uh, pin ad campaign. And they, they use all that information so they know exactly who to show it to. And if you're gonna just go in and run a bunch of, of sponsored pins without doing your work of keywording up your profile, keyword up your boards, keyword up everything, then Pinterest, you're not giving them enough information. Wow. What's gonna happen is, is your pins, you're, you're paying for these pins and they're not gonna do much for you. So at that point, you're pretty much looking just very spammy then. No, it just means that you're going to pay out more money and you Pinterest doesn't money. know who to show it to. Yeah. So it's just, it's going to be paying money with no, no action happening. <clears throat> so, um, so let's, so let's say I, I have a profile that's just on point. My keywords are great. I run an ad. Number one, how are the ads uh, compared to Facebook? Cause I, I ran Facebook ads and, and, it, it doesn't do anything. And what are the conversions like? Um, are people seeing if you, if you do it right, results? Uh -huh. if you do it right, you can do it for a lot less money mm -hmm. than what you could on, on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I mean, it was like five bucks minimum. And as they go, I think they keep raising that, you know, to make it where you got to pay out more and more and more for it to be somewhat effective. Mm -hmm. With Pinterest, you don't have to do what the default says in Pinterest. You need there's a um, there's a special formula that I use to think about the price of the product and what is the um, conversion rate, and you do the math to figure that out. And now you know exactly how much per click that you want to set it for. I got you. And it's usually less than a dollar. 
Wow. Far, far less than a dollar. Whereas if you do the default, Pinterest is going to say it's like over two bucks per click. And everyone looks at this and says, whoa, that's expensive. I can't afford this. That's just a default. You really need to think through the math formula. Okay. And you can get your click down way less than a dollar. Uh, and it can be very, very effective for you. So it depends on the price of your product. The more expensive the product, it might cost you a little bit more in, in clicks. Mm -hmm. But uh, those can be uh, great tools for conversions. And you can start your uh, tracking your CTAs your, or your click your click through rate, your CTRs that are happening okay. there. OK. <clears throat> Let's talk about your course, because um, <clears throat> I think it'll help a lot of people. I'm sorry about my voice. Um, but uh, I am enrolled. Uh, you know, I, I, look, I'm, I'm going to admit, one of the perks of having a having a podcast is I reach out to people like Teresa, and she gives me access to her course for free, OK? However, I am utilizing it. I'm watching the videos. I'm, cur I'm, I'm still on your uh, uh, the Pinterest for business setup. That's what I'm currently watching now. Because look, Glenn, you know me, dude. I'm, I'm willing to try everything. Uh, uh, and this is another thing that I'm going to take on here. Um, tell us about the courses. Um, and, and you teach us everything about the, uh, the ads and everything, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this was a huge endeavor. Uh, so this was something that I, I don't know, I kind of fell into this. It wasn't planned for sure. But um, I was just looking for a way to solve a problem of how can I drive more traffic to my store. And and I knew a long time ago, I knew about three years ago that we can't just sit and, and rely on Amazon or any other marketplace that you have absolutely no control over. It just doesn't make any sense to do that. So I started investigating Pinterest further and learning everything that I could. Um, and making a ton of mistakes, a lot of them, mm -hmm. through it. But it's been good because it's really helped me to refine, you know, what works and, and get a better understanding. So what happened was, is I, I was, uh, um, I have coaching since I began, you know, being asked to, to talk about it and teach them. And then it turned into, I was asked to do a webinar. This was a year ago and, and pick a topic. I thought, well, I'm kind of tired of talking about these other things. I want to talk about Pinterest because nobody mm -hmm. wants to talk about it. And I want to talk about it <laughs> because I think it's something that we should pay attention to. So I did. And it was just a free webinar and all kinds of people were, they responded to that like, wow, they had no idea. And they, they began asking, you know, do you have a course? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> Maybe I should put something together. <laughs> so then I began putting something together and I thought, oh, how am I going to do this? Because there's, there, it, it Pinterest is like a monster. There's a lot that is involved with it. And I wasn't sure how I could organize it and put this thing together. So I ended up with one, one course and the course, as I kept building it, just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, people started taking the course and I started hearing the feedback from them and their feedback was, okay, it's great, but now I'm completely overwhelmed. <laughs> they had, I had no idea all of the stuff that was involved. And so I started to think about that heavily, like what can I do to make it less overwhelming? Because it was really, really good feedback. And I didn't want people to just quit and give up because that's not the whole purpose of this. Um, so I thought about it and then I made the official decision this, this spring to move it over to a different platform. So it used to be housed on Facebook that was great. It was just a way of testing it, seeing what would happen. Do people uh, like it or not? Um, you know, and now it turns out, yes, that people really do have an interest and a need for this. So I needed to change it to a new platform. I started moving everything over. And what happened was I took one giant course and I split it down into 12 small courses. I've noticed that. And they're reasonably <laughs> priced. Yeah. Um, anywhere between 10 uh, to like 20 bucks, I believe. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so you, so you guys can, uh, uh, purchase the one that you feel is best for you. Um, right. yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm watching the videos as we speak and, uh, um, I'm learning a lot. I mean, you put a lot of time and effort in, into these, uh, uh, modules and, um, so, so I'm learning a lot. Um, I want to put it to use. 
once I graduate, and uh, I'm really excited about uh, uh, trying to leverage pen. Uh, I almost said Penji Pinterest, <laughs> um, because again, I think it's really important that we take control over our traffic on Amazon because we don't we don't control any of that, and I think it's about time that we do. Yeah, and definitely take action. Uh, you know, after each course, take action within that before you start the next one. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna get you're gonna get overwhelmed and realizing, oh wait, I didn't do anything. I better back up and do this first before I go on to the next step. So I was trying to organize it in a way where it's step by step by step, and sometimes that that can be a little tricky uh, for me to figure that out. But as I go, I get really you know good at trying to organize that information in a way where we can digest it in the easiest and fastest way possible. So I don't like the videos to be too long. I like I love doing uh, video teaching where it's very short and to the point. Mm -hmm. So that you can just get moving on it quickly, and get, not get, get, get. yes. <laughs> Come on, get to the next one. <laughs> so that you can do something and not have to sit and listen to an hour of rambling, right? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of them that that's what it ends up being, and and it's very frustrating. Um, when I could basically sum it up in five minutes, here's what you need to do. Absolutely, um, no, you, that, you did you did a really good job. That's what needs to happen because people need to just get what they need and then get going and take that action. Um, then I was asked uh, in January, hey, what about for those of us that are in, that are doing Merch by Amazon? And I thought, well, the whole thing applies. But then they were confused and said, well, it says a website and all these things to verify. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, yeah. So what I did was with this new platform is it allows me to take these small courses, I broke it down into small courses and organize it where you can have now a focus. And so if you have a Merch by Amazon focus, then you can select this bundle. And what will happen is you're only going to get the courses that you need. For Merch by Amazon, I yes. saw that. Mm. Yes, you don't need the other stuff, so don't do it because right. that's going to be a time waster. And, and if you guys are interested in uh, Shopify, you can choose a Shopify bundle. And 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 that'll bring in all the videos that's relevant to Shopify. Right. Um, so yeah. no, I, I didn't see that. We're gonna create uh, another one here soon for WordPress. So for people who have WordPress blogs, websites, give you the bundle that has the videos that pertains just focused on that. This is just mm -hmm. a way to help people focus, because uh, that was the number one problem that I was hearing from the course members that they were having was you know, trying to focus and figure out, should I be doing this or not? I don't have a website. Should I be worried about that? It was in the course, you know, <laughs> is that something that I need to do Pinterest? I thought, no, you don't have to have that to do Pinterest, but I understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, they needed to have focus and things organized in a way where they can keep moving forward and not get paralyzed um, or feel as though they're leaving out a step somewhere and, they're, they're truly not. It's not it's not important if it doesn't apply to them. So that's that's something that I think is unique about this new platform is it makes it a whole lot easier now to organize stuff so that you are so that so that people can be served in a way that, that is best for them. And I think that's what's most important for me is that people can get what they need and exactly what they need. And um, I'll, we will have <clears throat> excuse me, we will have, have the link. Oh my gosh! We will have the link in the show notes. Um, that way, you guys can buy uh, each course individually, or you can buy uh, the bundle. Like you said, like if you're if you want to do Shopify, you can buy the Shop Shopify bundle or the Merch by Amazon, or you can just purchase each course individually. Uh, they're straightforward and reasonably priced, in my opinion. <clears throat> Glenn, did you have any questions? Uh, I guess just the last part, anything about the uh, Merch by Amazon package, I believe it's like 10 or 11 courses. And um, I guess anything that you want to say specifically that would target Merch by Amazon that they could look forward to if they want to decide to purchase it? Yeah, so I just I just built that bundle last night. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and one person went in and... and, and bought the bundle after an hour of setting it up so I know I know then that tells me that that must have helped by trying to organize it in that way 
Otherwise, you're looking at all of these courses. You're like, where do I even begin? What do I need first? <laughs> um, so, you know, um, one thing that I want to add is a keyword, beginning a keyword database. And a lot of people said they had interest in this because they don't have time to sit and do the keyword research on Pinterest. So I thought, well, we could do that for you and update it periodically. And, you know, put it in a spreadsheet and you can download the whole spreadsheet, set it up, and now you've got keywords ready to go for you to, to just get right into your pin descriptions. Or you might be able to, to get those keywords and think about how you want to title your boards using, the, using the, that information. So that's something that I'm going to work on and begin adding, adding in as well, as long as, as long as that's something that people have an interest in. If, if not, then it's not worth, you know, putting the time into it. But yeah. uh, the feedback I was hearing was, oh, yes, having, having lists of keywords off of Pinterest through the research would be very valuable uh, to them because that's where you need to put your time and effort into is the keywords. Okay. So and, oh, I'm sorry, might help. I was just going to say that might help a little bit. Um, and that will be added in and um, you'll see it. If you log into your Thinkific account, you'll see it automatically, you know, added in where you could share it with people anytime that uh, new things are added. So there's a lot of plans here in the works for a lot of stuff. I've got some blueprints that I'm wanting to create. Um, I've been working on a Shopify strategy, a Shopify Pinterest strategy for a few months now, testing it. Uh, my VAs have been um, creating a lot of the stuff, and then I'm the one that keywords everything up inside of Pinterest because I haven't taught them that yet. <laughs> it's like that one valuable thing that's, that's really hard to just train someone to do it really well because it's probably the most important piece. So I've got a blueprint there of what I've been using so that I can make the Shopify store be essentially a central command center for all links. So if something should happen, maybe there's a broken link somewhere, it's much easier for you to go into your Shopify store and fix the link there than it is to go and fix it out on hundreds of thousands of pins. Okay. So that's how that solves that problem. So what I'm doing Super is I'm cool. taking the traffic and I want to leverage the traffic and the work that I'm doing. I'm not sending it directly to Amazon. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm doing is I'm being selfish. <laughs> and I'm taking the Pinterest traffic and I'm moving it. I'm having it come to the store and then from the store, have it go over to Amazon or some of it goes to Sunfrog, some of it goes to Redbubble, have it go wherever you want it to go. Now, if there should be a broken link, which happens with Merch by Amazon, there was a ton of broken, broken links that were happening last January. Mm -hmm. if, if those broken links happen, all you have to do is go to one place, change the link out so it's fixed, and that's it. Really easy to keep track of. That is super cool. That so is super cool. That's the strategy that I came up with about March and started executing that. So I'll write up a blueprint of what that's about and... Uh, the app that I'm using where I can use affiliate links. Mm -hmm. So they're all affiliate links that are in there. So you're getting paid twice. Yeah, you double dip on it. Yep. yep. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense to me. No, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> to do that. I, I mean, so that's the strategy that I thought was going to be pretty cool uh, wow. because once they're in the store, they're going to look around. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they don't buy that, they might look at something else and They'll say, oh, this else. is cool. Yeah. I mean, why not take some of that traffic and make sure it goes to your place mm -hmm. uh, where it hits your place first before you send them out somewhere else? I tell you what, this, this has all been very informational and educational because one of the things that I wanted to do was, and Glenn, I know you're going to shake your head, head when I say this, but one thing I want to do this year is uh, try and start like an affiliate website. And I'm thinking, well, gosh darn it, well, Pinterest sounds like a good complement to running an affiliate website. Um, <clears throat> so, no, this is this, this very informational, Teresa. I, I'm, I, I learned a lot. Um, I'm going to continue watching the videos um, and the modules. Glenn, I'll give you access to my account. You don't, you don't have to give him an account, Teresa. I'll, I'll give him access to my account. <laughs> he, he can watch the videos there. And, um, again, guys, we'll, we'll have... Uh, the link in the show notes. 
Teresa, thank you so much for being here. We learned so much. Um, we'd love to hear about that blueprint once it's uh, fully written up. So we'll, we'll love to have you back on the show. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fun. I like to strategize. That's one of my things that I do for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. <laughs> that to me sounds like someone who's very successful. I like it. The brain is always working, you know, and I start thinking through this and it just hits me. Like I can see, I start thinking in my head and I see the whole thing and I, I map it out from beginning to end in my head. And if it works in my head and I can map it out, then I write it down. A lot of people do the opposite. They write out everything. I can't do that. I just try to <laughs> I do have something to map it out in my head. Yeah, I just try to do something. If it doesn't work, I just get frustrated. Yeah, that, yeah. I think that's awesome. <laughs> but th thanks again, Teresa. Um, we'll be in touch, uh, and, and we'll talk soon. All right. Sounds great. Great show. Great interview. Look, my voice is gone, dude. I know. Uh, yeah. Let's, we... let's just freaking end the show now. Do, do you have any closing comments? No, I just want you to get rest. Okay. So, guys, <clears throat> um, if you guys are interested, uh, we'll have – the link to her uh, course in the show notes. Um, Glenn, where, where can people find you? Uh, Hustler Hacks on YouTube. And uh, just just tag me on Facebook. I'll, I'll, I'll return your messages. Thanks, guys. See you.